sh 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 Way, mate. I'm already thirsty. It's a nerve wracking show. And I already drank gasoline. <clears throat> Wait. Caroline? Caris? Ca Carafin? Car Car paraffin? Carafin? It's one of those two. Paraffin? I want a glycerine. Is that what he was talking about? Yes. Glycerine. Is he saying that? He's, he's talking saying about glycerine, the right? Yeah, he's talking about the stunt we did that we'll get to eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't expect to be talking about Bush this early in the day. <laughs> Everybody talks about Bush. That's how you start the show. I think we remember all remember that guy? where we were when we heard Glycerine for the first time. No, I don't. But that is, what other song did he do that was better than Glycerine? What is Glycerine? I thought it was Listerine with gas in it. <laughs> uh, I think it's what you call a song when you desperately want to be Nirvana and they already took all the cool words that sound like that. Wow, harsh, but <laughs> I'll be factual. Take that, Bush. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's taken that. <laughs> I think he's made his peace with what he is. I it's know, a, right? <laughs> uh, I just Googled it. Glycerine or glycerin. Glycerol? See? He's showing a whole bunch of different things. He doesn't say glycerol. It's glycerol. He doesn't glycerone. do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a mildly antimicrobial and antiviral that is an FDA-approved treatment for wounds. Think about it, man. Wounds. You and know we all what? got them on the inside. <laughs> you know, I noticed, I don't know if it's because I go to a hospital lately and I got like high condition bullshit or something, but I noticed that there's a big thing for wounds. There's billboards that yes. say, hey, wounds, we got you covered at something, something wounds.com. And I'm like, whoa, everybody, everybody has wounds. Like when you get to a certain age, you got to go to CVS to get wound patches or some shit? We talked about wound care on those billboards recently on oh. either this show or one of the Patreon shows. Wound care. Is there Mate. no God? Sorry. And since then, I've been hearing from the wound care community. There are some of them. We have wound care listeners. Are they we triggered? No, 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 no. They're, they are now. I think they're pretty excited to see their... They've never felt like they were in such a glamorous profession before. Oh, they, I, they feel seen. Turns out there's a, there's a grimy underside to wounds. I thought that <laughs> wound care was kind of similar to Depends, but... <laughs> Uh, uh, I think it's a lot of crossover in the, I feel like the people, audience. They might see there might be a day where you have to go to the wound to the yeah. store to get wound patches and depends, dude. The billboards this don't is make a great it, day today. No, the billboards don't make it seem like somebody who was performing a, a flame stunt while riding moto. It looks more like an old lady who's like, I don't know, that's just there now. I haven't shit my pants in years. I can't even imagine what it'd be like to shit your pants yesterday and then the day before that. And yeah. then you know you're gonna shit it right now. I hate oh. shitting my pants. Another right? wound? Yeah. Oh, it. and then top it off with a wound. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Oh, no, I shit my pants. What the <laughs> hell's that? Oh, another wound. <laughs> like, come on. Labor Day is ruined. <laughs> like, you were going to fucking do anything. You oh, look and good. I think you guys, I hear honestly, me. you look good. It's good to be here. Hello, Henry, Henry Zabrowski. Zabrowski. Can you turn? We need Zabrowski needs to be a little bit louder. I want you to louder. See, this is as loud. I can I can pump it. That's good. Humanly, I can pump it with I, my lungs. I believe that. I just saw you on TV the other day. You look way skinnier uh, in person, even though this is Zoom. It's cancer. Are you? Oh, that's what oh, I was no. going to say. What is your I'm riddled, secret? Riddled with it. Right. Riddled with it, and it's not going away. They said it's the last one that I'll have. No, I <laughs> wish. I I don't know what happened. I literally just don't. I don't care anymore. What, wait a minute. My body. What, I don't care. Weren't you a really big fat person a long time I, ago? Very, very, very big. I was close to three hundred pounds, and then and I'm five foot seven. And did you get gastric bypassy thing? No, what I did was I just, well, I, the story is, is that I was going in for Wolf of Wall Street. When I booked Wolf of Wall Street, I went in to get an insurance check. 
Right. And what they do is every single time you go into a movie, I had had a couple of jobs lined up behind before then that I went to go get my insurance check. And they said my blood pressure was out of control. Oh, shit. Right. And they said that I couldn't go on a set. So they said I needed to drop weight. They basically, they were like, you need to drop 10 points on either side of your blood pressure or you can't be in a movie. And this was the biggest thing that had ever happened to me still is the, the I'm, only thing. I'm sensing that when they gave you that news, you were more concerned about getting the weight off to get that part than any concerns about finding out you had really high blood pressure and that you were, you know. I didn't give a shit about my blood crazy. pressure. That's crazy. Yeah, I didn't care. I was like, oh, who cares? I mean, this is good Scorsese. Yeah. But I'm so, trying to be. So you accidentally got a little healthier just to get in a movie. And, yeah. And then, and then what? And then, and then how do you lose more? How, do, how does this start to happen? Well, I got into it. I think what I, at some point, because my main thing was that I am, uh, I'm an eater. I was a big old smoker and drinker. And I mean, you know, I'm still a, a drinker, mm. but I was a fucking animal and I loved my life. Are I you, loved uh, my life. What about drugs? You do bumps and shit? I didn't do cocaine because I don't like the way it makes my skin feels. I was a downer, dude. I liked Do you do pills. heroin? No, I don't like needles, but pills. Oh, so like um, painkillers and stuff? Yeah, I liked hydrocodone back in the day, but I don't like it anymore because now I have a wife and I have to be present. Yeah. No, I feel like you could maybe have one on a Saturday um, with your dinner every now and then. But if you're consistently <laughs> eating pills and you're a dad, yeah, that's a bad. Yeah. That's a bad. <laughs> it's, it's bad. Yeah. Because then again, once kids become coasters, you know what I mean? Like once you can like put a drink on the top of their heads and they walk around and it doesn't matter, then it's or bad. You start asking your son to go get your pill bottle. Do you know? Give him, do, give him, give him, give him chicklets. Do you know we have a, <laughs> we have like a, a part time sitter in our home, and she's been coming by for a couple months now. And it only just occurred to me that the the chicken noodle soup cans and the mac and cheese boxes are directly on top of our kratom and prescription drugs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to do drugs. So every single time she's fed my children, she's had to encounter our drugs. <laughs> it's in the, in the through kitchen. clonopin. In yeah. the, it's like the, the comfort kitchen. food cabinet. Right. It has all the things that keeps everybody comfortable. Right next to the almond milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the soothing cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's my smile drawers. Yeah, either- I... Go ahead. No, dude. I just, you know, then I just, I did the thing. I learned to like salads. When I met my wife, she was like way more athletic than me. And so now I like, she's a stunt woman. My wife's a stunt woman. Oh, and shit. Like, like yeah, a so long time one, like been doing this. That's her career. She was and movie producer. She, she was doing a lot of like doubles and stuff, but she's very tall. Did she so come from an athletic background? Because I've always wondered, how, I've got a couple of stunt friends and they're usually retired athletes from other yeah. bullshit what what was your wife what how did she get so physical because it is a fucking physical job she's insane she's a ballerina she was a ballerina ah, trained ballerina for years and they love pain anybody who's been through the ballet world like they just they are just mangled i think anybody that it. does 10 years of a high level sport except for um maybe bowling or whatever it is because <laughs> but i i even that, That's a mental I, game. I, even that, I feel like somebody who's the highest level bowler in the world probably does pretty good at, you know, let him do some boxing, let him do, you know, it's a hand eye kind of thing. I've a balance core. I'm trying to one he time, hit, one time I talk shit on bowling a lot. And then I was at a wedding. I was at, um, <laughs> uh, AJ, AJ from Backstreet Boys. I was at his wedding. Very <laughs> odd that he, he and I became kind of weird, uh, Radio friends that happened back in the day a little bit to mm-hmm. me. I think come to my wedding and I'm like, fuck, okay, yeah, fuck. I don't know <laughs> okay. anybody here. This is Nali. This is like, look at that. In sync guys here too. And then uh fuck, what was I saying? Uh bowling. Yeah, the bowling, bowling. guy sat next to me at the when you have the reception <laughs> thing. So I don't know. And he goes, Hey man, uh, I'm a huge fan of your show. And I was like, Oh shit, no way, crazy. Yeah, actually, my wife and I are huge fans. And I was like, that's awesome, man. And I was like, thank God I got a, you know, like I got somebody here that's going to talk to me and knows me. Yeah, he I'm, knows my shit. Yeah. I was hiding. I think I was sober too. So I was just like, meh, meh, Mr. No Fun. And then uh, he goes, uh, I came down to what do you do? And he's like, yeah, I'm actually a professional bowler. And I was like, oh. And he goes, yeah, I know how you feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, not really. And he's like, yeah, it's okay, man. Like I've heard you talk, but. 
you'd be surprised. It's not as easy as you think. And blah blah blah. And, you know, oh and he, yeah. He made me. He made me double. You know, think twice because I had. I I love to talk shit on every sport that isn't skateboarding. So it's pretty ridiculous. But I I do think that bowling is an actual sport now. Yeah, now, well, that's a good thing because it also takes inner leg strength. Yeah, um, it takes a, a lot of a stuff. Bowler, a bowler can hit a woman's clip with a tennis ball from like twenty yards away. That's so. That's I think. Sexy. That's a huge skill. Well, and also, I think they're all alcoholics. So you have to bear that in mind. That has to make the job a little bit more difficult. Being somewhat athletical while wasted is definitely <laughs> more difficult. When you yeah. had three pitchers of beer before, like, the World <laughs> Series of <laughs> sport. And you have to build obstacles for dude, yourself dude, because that's how you show you're a true champion. Look, you, you eat set that up you, your own walls. You eat that much disco fries and you ball a 300. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you just took I, away all the flattering things I said about the bowling guy that I talked to. Immediately done. I mean, I'm on my show. I constantly, I mean, because I do believe it's true. I, a statistic that I don't, I believe I've read, but I will never say that if I actually did read it was that 90% of janitors are sex criminals. Um, and uh, they get, I get a lot of flack from that because there's a lot of janitors that <laughs> specifically will show up with their mop. Yeah. It's like, I ain't fucking any kids. Yeah. And no, you're like, oh, are, you sound like you do, though. I understand that. <laughs> I think at one point, Tully was telling everybody in Canada that they were uh, mud people and their eyes didn't exactly open. <laughs> and some, people found, uh, yeah. some people found that to be. Probably most people got proof. it, but some people uh, were like, hey, man, fuck my eyes. <laughs> Completely open, eh? <laughs> <laughs> look at him. Look at him. See? Yeah, see? Look. See? Eyes are wide open. Look at him right at you, right, Michael. What are you going to do about that? <laughs> uh, Henry, I think your microphone's clipping a little bit if you want to pull yourself back just a, a teensy bit. Uh-oh. I'm back in. Mike lessons I'm here with, with Michael. You. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been on a podcast before. <laughs> I, to be honest, I do think there's a lot of pe people ask me, especially like, oh, you got a podcast. You can tell me how to do a tech setup in my home i don't fucking know i talk i talk into it you know uh do you know who don fry is yes yeah don fry called me about six months ago and asked me how to set up a, a <laughs> studio <laughs> and i was like man i love you don fry like you're a legend legend and, and i am very similar to you don as in i don't know what the fuck is happening you know what i mean i, I Somebody I else put up. that shit there, and I'm like, Bleh! you know what I mean? I don't, I don't <laughs> know. Thank what, God they did, because I, I don't know how the cables work, man. I don't know how this shit is. He must have called somebody else after he called me, because I saw that he's got a show. <laughs> <laughs> so that that worked out for him. Yeah, he must. <laughs> he didn't give up and no, no. just chase it else. He was like, "Wow, that didn't fucking help at all." Let me call somebody with somewhat of a fucking thing to say. I'm feeling Don Let Fry. Me. Don Fry called the Geek Squad. <laughs> <laughs> and then gave him I all guess wedgies. I'll call my other friend Howard Stern. Yeah, wow. He, he would Mr. not have got Stern. much more help from that. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, everybody, Jason Ellis reminding you about Lean Feast. Lean Feast is a meal prep company that i am great friends with that send you big boxes of meals already prepared in little individual tupperware thingamajigamas that you pop in the microwave and you stick it in there for about a minute minute 45 depending on which one it is and then bob is literally your uncle it comes out and you eat it like for me right now. I've done a couple of shows and because I didn't order any Lean Feast because I'm trying to do it my, my own way, now I'm paying a hefty price by being completely starving hungry and now I'm going to have to go make something while I'm still starving. If you, got, if you go to leanfeast.com, there's a store near you, places, check them out online, pick up delivery. And if you use code Alice, you'll get a 10% discount on all this illustrious food that will be sent to your door or you can pick up and you can pick from all different tasty things that warm your soul and your tummy and make you continue on your great day becoming and advancing being a great human being. Because you're so busy and so brilliant and you're on the hustle and you're making sure that you get your food so your brain is full of vitamins and energy so that it works and it makes money and it hustles and the ladies adore you or, or the men, I don't know, whatever. You then you want to eat when you're on the go because you're on the go. You're a hustler. Am I right? Well, you need to get into the, the cool van where you get yourself a little cool that's insulated that keeps your food cool or your drinks cool or believe it or not this is gonna blow your mind hot that's right 
This insulated storage facility can keep your food hot. It, it operates on, wait, it has power options for 110 or 12 volt applications. Cool vent allows you to bring your meals with you and you can heat them up where you are. You can keep them hot while you're in the car, plug it in, or you can plug it in at home. You can cook stuff. You can go somewhere and then plug it in and then cook it on the heat plate thing in me, jigger me. It's ridiculous. And if you have both of those, you're on your way to becoming a more advanced human being. Like moi. Is that the word you use? Anyway, Coolven. What's that thing called? Dash. Cool-ven.com. Cool-ven, V-E-N, dot com. You go there. List of retailers. And you can get it sent to your house. And yes, Code Alice. For another 10% discount at checkout. Don't be stupid. Do this and be advanced like moi. I love that now. Not the most helpful person in the world. I saw, so you got your podcast and I go down the the wormhole because I'm new to podcasting as in listening to podcasting. Hey, oh, can I say as a member of the podcast league? Yes, welcome. you are. Oh, can yeah. Say- fucking thank you. Because, yeah. Uh, somebody yes because now that i'm starting to understand and and uh, and, because i really tried to stay away from it because it was very annoying to me that yes my radio career wasn't doing the evolve the evolving that everybody else was doing in broadcasting i was like fuck man so i would try not to pay attention but now that i'm fully in this then i've been listening to everybody i found a podcast that talks shit on your podcast they have a podcast where All they do is talk shit on all other podcasts. Oh, sure. Did not know that that was a thing that happened in the podcast world. I can't wait for our episode. I that's what it'll be. (laughs) It's soon. It's soon. You got Um, the guy said that you sucked because you were so uh, organized and good, and and you never had a gap, and it was always constant fire of jokes. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, wow, yeah, that sounds like a real piece of shit show. It's a real problem. I man. was confused <laughs> as fuck how this guy thought that was the bad part. Yeah, they got your number, Henry. Yeah, they got me, man. We yeah. work too hard and and we deliver too. Good. That's what he said. Yeah, you run a tight <laughs> ship and you're just spot on, and that shit annoys the hell out of him. It's like I this mean, doesn't sound natural. As a as a person that I, I he feeds you. A little yeah. bit. I, I am yep. not a big shit talker. Like, I don't like beefs. I don't like when people try to, like, do beefs because, it, to me, it's cheap. My my shit is that, like, we like to create content. Like, yeah. we like to create a good-ass show. Yeah. Where you got three dudes where it's like, it's we are, we want to be the show and we want to be as good as possible. Um, and so, but the end, if you get, if you get mad about it, I don't really what to tell you, dude, cause I don't get mad about other podcasts. I think that the the best thing about podcasts is that there's room literally for everyone. Yeah. That's my the internet. My it's favorite fucking- part is that, yeah, everybody seems to be that, that one was the trippiest thing to me because I, as up until yesterday, when I heard that, but well, podcasts are all for each other. There's never a, I grew up in a, I'm at, I, I never had a job in broadcasting and now I'm at Sirius XM where Opie and Anthony hate Howard Stern and, <laughs> just, the, yeah. you know, and I was like, oh, oh, well, uh, well, fuck, both yeah, well, fuck, yeah, fuck Bubba the Love Sponge. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I fucking, yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll, I'll get, I'll get Karen Winterman <laughs> yeah. from the, the Milwaukee butt talk. Like, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah, I'll come for your ass. I just uh, don't want, I don't want to fight. Yeah, I don't want to fight. Life's. Life's hard enough as it is. You came from ultra competitive sports too. Like I can't imagine leaving leaving one arena and then coming into the the flabbiest of asses of competitions. Like you go into a place where you literally like used to leave blood smeared like on the floor. Where now you have like it, it's just the smell of my dick. And <laughs> wow, that and sounds these walls. That sounds way more terrifying than slamming and bleeding. The smell <laughs> of your dick, really? Like I don't know what. I don't think I've been threatened harder in my entire life. Sorry, what I'm the sorry. Fuck? Also, the name of Henry's <laughs> debut EP. <laughs> <laughs> I was got it. started as a book of poems <laughs> that I've slowly. It's it's street poetry that I have start to allow to grow into music. Right. Uh, speaking of books, you the last podcast on the left has a book we did oh shit i didn't know that we i don't did. read so that's tough it's cool man it's got a lot of pictures in it i'll send you one Ooh, it's i like a- pictures 
it's re- it's pretty it's pretty big. We get it, we basically wanted to make an evil mad magazine version of a serial killer encyclopedia. So Sweet. we have the guy. It's pretty dope. Tom Neely, who you got? Do you know? Um, uh, it's a comic of uh, Henry and Glenn. Kevin, do you know? Like, yes. Okay. No, my wife Katie, knows, Katie it. knows it. Yeah. He illustrated this. It's about Danzig and Henry Rollins. Are they are roommates? Oh, sick! I'm so. That's probably my. Yeah, it's I, great. Yeah, I can't. It's great. Two. I can't think of two more. Two other people in the world I want to know about. Like whatever they're doing, fucking show me. I love that. It's fucking great. I mean, yeah. he he illustrated our book, so it's all just it's very intense, uh, like hard R serial killer like comic book mixed with the thickest information that we could put into it. Like oh, wow. it's it's a lot of work. Do you have a personal favorite serial killer, Henry? Oh God, it's a, it's a tricky thing because I think I used to be way more of like. I have I have a John Wayne Gacy drawing like I have some stuff in my house where it stopped was is that I had a collection of Bundy uh, Ted Bundy silverware Mm. that he had from his favorite Waffle House. Man, you might stop. You might want to start collecting uh, like prescription pills again if you're going (laughs) to. What the fuck is happening, man? Like I get it. You're you got a podcast about it. You got to oh, simmer down there. That's creepy, no, man. Th- this was years. This was years ago, right? And then yeah. I had this shit, and then somehow, and I believe it was like it was fate or some kind of hand of of the universe. Somehow, one of my waffle those Ted Bundy Waffle House forks got into my actual silverware. I think it happened when somebody was staying at my apartment. And my wife, my best before she was a wife, I watched her eat with it. Right. She did the thing. I watched her eat with yeah. it. And so what I do is that I had to like take it and then I just threw it in the trash. You and didn't tell her like, that she <laughs> probably just ate off a spoon that had a like a human on it. <laughs> like, just like, this has to go. This has to go. So I have now stepped away from stereo killer fandom. I am fascinated by them but for the most part what we find is that they are the reason why people are serial killers is because they are fucking losers and they don't have any skills would you so you wouldn't buy a house like uh the the haunted guy that has that weird waxed uh sideburns you wouldn't like buy a manson house or anything like that those things don't interest you i wouldn't go that far because what about if you were buying very interesting? What about if you were buying a new house? You're super loaded, podcast kicking ass, and you're like, "Fuck sure. that! I'm getting a mansion." And the realtor goes, "Just so you know, this one's actually a bit cheaper because there was a mass murder in it." Do you go, "Ah, oh, fuck! I, I mean, I can't, I can't get that. The wife will freak out." Or do you, or do you go, "Oh shit! This is the greatest day of my life because I just got a cheaper deal and the house I like more." We kind of have a fascination with murder houses. Right. We do. Oh, that works. Because out. we've looked into it. We've we've looked into it because it because it is interesting. Because like uh, th- there are certain stories. I forget who it was. Just recently was just up for sale. I forget who it was, and it wasn't even bad. I want to say it was like um because John Wayne Gacy's house was demolished. Probably the other house it was it, it was like a, it was some big. We looked at it. It was like one hundred fifty grand. It was the same thing. Oh, where it was okay. just like this is an investment. Yeah, we make it a little museum. Or you make it into Ooh. something else. Like you make it into a thing where people go visit, but then we're like, we're lazy. <laughs> In the end, we just don't. We're not doing real estate deals. They're have very you, complicated. Here's my other question when it comes to all this horror shit. Have you seen a ghost? Because usually people like you. Sorry to say the, like you, but you know I could probably yes. go back where I came from and all sure. that stuff as well. Sure, sure. <laughs> you... I feel like because Corey people. Taylor, Corey you, you, Taylor, formally using you people. Yeah, I, look, I'll put you in. I'm yeah. putting you. I'm putting you in with Corey. You know, Corey Taylor from Slipknot, right? Yes. yes Corey yes, Taylor yes. loves horror. Corey yes. Taylor, one time holding his child, was pushed downstairs by a ghost, and I so believe that dude. I feel like Corey Taylor is a really good person and a and a and a very smart man, a gifted man who is in so he loves horror so much. That I think he believes he was pushed downstairs by a ghost. I don't, and I think it's because you love it and you think about it all the time, so it comes to you. So, have you seen one? Well, man, anomalous phenomenon is tricky, right? Because <laughs> up to a certain point, like there is a, I think there's a fifty-fifty. There's a fifty-fifty. Like our brains create the space yeah. for the thing to happen. Yeah. Right. Like what you're saying, there is both, but I'm so horny for it that I've never really seen it. The closest I ever got was that the last apartment that we lived in, like 
I've been, t- I talked about this on the show and I don't know what it was or not. Right. But like, I own one belt, right? I have one belt that goes on my pants. Oh, I thought you were going to say like a UFC belt or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not going to. I'm not doing stolen valor. I thought you were, about, I thought you were saying you're, and you're, and you're, you're going to come back for one more fight. That's what I thought was yeah, about yeah. to happen right now. Oh, guys, I'm ready. Um, <laughs> just get fucking just sexually tortured in the ring. I, um... I had a belt. I have one belt. My dad told me my dad was a cop and his only his his advice at all times was like, make sure when you go to sleep, you keep your belt in your wallet and your pants. Right. Because it's things that's how you don't lose them. You don't lose your wallet, but keep your wallet in your pants. OK, so what you have your your belt like in bed with you. <laughs> it's, it's we're close right next to the wallet and ted bundy spoon <laughs> yeah it's cl- we're close Man. but i leave it in my pants so one day i woke up my belt's gone right oh, can't shit. find this belt anywhere don't know where the fuck it is other shit is getting wiggity my friend amber comes over she's like there's a force from the top stairs that watches me in this apartment my yeah. sister stays there she's like uh, we're not alone in here yeah. i'm freaked out as fuck when we're in here i've never seen anything i've never because they also say apparently weed blocks uh these type of experiences ah, weed is very fuck. bad well that explains for that's yeah, why i haven't seen one huh you waiting your whole yeah. life <laughs> god damn it man <laughs> and i really want to see a ghost but not as much very as i want to smoke few, weed very few jamaican <laughs> ghosts yeah. Yeah. Me, too. <laughs> me too i was like i'm not giving up weed for a psychic experience yeah. i have a psychic experience every day it's called weed yeah but then they i ended up so i went i i was talking about i talked to several people i know that are in the ghost hunting world and i say what do i do i feel like that something happened here what do i do just because i tear the whole fucking house apart no clue where this belt is they're like you need to put out an offering you need to sit you need to ask whatever it is to bring it back and then and nicely and make a try to make a bridge to it. So I did the whole thing. I made a fuck. I literally made a sandwich. I smoked half a joint. I left it there for him. And then I sat there and I was just like, can I please have my belt back? Can you please, please bring it back? Next day, I go into where I literally where my workout clothes are. My belt is jammed underneath the bottom of all this shit. And I find it. So yeah. I guess that's the thing. I don't know. You don't think it was that lady that told you to. Put a doobie there, and then she <laughs> put the belt. Um, Very well thought I out prank. Um, yeah. I or, I, or, think- or it was the fucking belt ghost of Christmas past. I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't know. Or your friend it's wanted a boring story. It's not a boring story. I look. I, I'm one time when I was a kid. If I saw it, it would scare the shit out of me, and it wouldn't mean anything. Now I'm not moving. I'm asking questions, and it's probably going to disappear because it's going to be like I don't, I don't, I don't sign up for these kind of questions. Not answering them because I'm not. I am scared, but not as much as uh, I want to know. I'm like, wait, you're dead, and you're yeah. here. So if I die, I mean, can we hang out or? Yeah, you're putting a mic in front of that ghost and hitting record. Yeah. Oh yeah, and- buddy, that is a show, dude. You don't fucking. Yeah. You can't waste that material. But yeah, Hillary I Clinton like- would be good, but. <laughs> the ghost of Christmas past. That would be fucking. That's sick. a get. Yeah, I would be scared of the ghost of Hillary Clinton. Also, everybody, don't forget, onit.com forward slash Alice. Yes, you could probably just go to onit.com. Would that help? Yeah, that would be good. But if you go to onit.com slash forward slash Alice, then you get yourself a sweet discount and on it goes, wait, what's going on over here at this Jason Ellis podcast? How come everybody's going doing the onit.com forward slash Alice to get all their supplements, workout gear, kettlebells, and maces and battle ropes and uh, like uh, compression pants and uh, compression shirts, workout st- stuff for like ladies and men and t shirts that are made out of bamboo. What the hell's going on? All this stuff Alpha Brain Shroom Tech, Shroom Tech, Alpha Brain Instant, where you just put it in a bottle of water and you're freaking flying, man. Everybody. Thank you for going to onit.com forward slash Ellis, notifying on it that Ellis is doing great stuff. And uh, then, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll get a signature kettlebell. And then you'll be able to buy, instead of the ape face, you'll be able to f- f- buy Jason Ellis's face going, rah, and like that, ah, about with like big bar on the top of my head. Ah, I don't know. Could be good. So, yeah, go there. Thank you, on it, for, uh, 
always supporting the show. I oh, would yeah. be so visibly if Hillary Clinton Asher projected into my fucking house, yeah. we'd have to move. I think I'd be scared like, of Hillary Clinton. Yeah, good point. <laughs> oh my god, I'd be I'd be so scared to be in a room with her. I feel like if Hillary Clinton put on like a rash god and MMA <laughs> gloves and and revealed like because I don't think she's a very fit lady. I think she looks real bad in a rash god. <laughs> But I believe if she put in a mouth guard and <laughs> MMA gloves and had a rash guard on and we were in the octagon and she was like, get ready, bitch. I'm going to fucking knock you out. I would be just as scared of what's about to happen as if it would be Andre Orlovsky, who was like, what do you say about my girlfriend? I would feel the same way. I'd be like, everything you've ever got in you, Jason, make it work. Yeah. Really make <laughs> sure you, when you land, you land with everything you've got because Hillary's going to... <laughs> She's going to eat this punch. You're going to need to finish her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's going to kill me. Do you think that she has those tattoos like they do on jet fighters where they put the amount of people that she's failed like, yeah. during her time periods where she's got the tally marks of every person that's yeah. on her hands? I reckon she's got one of those bats from, uh, what's the the movie where the guy kills all the Jewish guys? Oh, are you talking about in, Inglorious in Bastards? Bastards? Yeah, I reckon she's got one of those bats shoved up her box and she pulls it out every now and then and puts another notch on it. <laughs> hey, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You're, yeah. you're more connected into this world. I don't know why I could assume you'd know more about this. Hillary but I Clinton? Float this if you've heard anything about this, okay. listen. Okay. Tom Cruise <laughs> buying and having sex with whole fish <laughs> from the store. I... I don't know how much of, I mean, that's kind of offensive, right? That he's like, hey, can I'm I ask asking. you a question? I'm We're talking about Tom Cruise fucking fish, and I know that you know fish fucking. <laughs> yeah, or, or, I mean, you're not, you, are, you, are you saying that you know me to be great friends with Tom Cruise? Everybody knows I, I don't know Tom Cruise. So you're saying, Ellis, you'd fuck a yeah. fish. You probably have fucked a fish. God knows you probably fucked a car with a fish in it. Yeah. How's Tom Cruise going? Why? How does it work? While well, it's going through Tom Cruise's mind, I feel like if, if anybody could analyze it yeah. or break it down, or I've heard of someone else having done it. I've know. never fucked a fish. Is that? I know. No, no, no. I'm not accusing you. Oh. I think that you like a human. I think you like hot blood. Yeah. Wow, thanks. Yeah, Another huge yeah, compliment. Yeah. So yeah. usually you like them alive. I look at you and I don't see a lover of the dead. Yeah. You know what? No, when I look at you, I think maybe you fuck fish, maybe you don't. But dead people, I don't think you fuck many of those. No, <laughs> that's that's huge for me. A lot of people think um, we're all sorts of. I've just been hearing a lot of stories. Is that Tom wait? Cruise. Is that a, the, the new rumor that Tom Cruise fucks fish? Come on, man. He walks into stores. There's this story because they say that it's definitely Tom Cruise because he's got this fucking. He's got four masks on. He's got like a, a phalanx of security. He walks up to a fish counter. He bought. He he debates. This is the, I've seen several blind items I'm learning about this, and I love reading this this shit about him. He went in, he found like he picks one. I guess the one with the biggest mouth, the sexy. So he's saying he's got a head. huge cock. <laughs> no, it's for a fish mouth though. All oh, right, <laughs> well, some fish have big mouths. Like yeah, I've seen fish that could suck a coke can. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess so. Like, yeah, I don't think he has a big dick though. Yeah. No, I I would. Yeah, if I had to. Guess I would say that it's either average or a little under. I feel like it's hard to run that fast if you have if you're packing heat. My that might be the case, but I don't. I feel like there might be some of those Jamaican guys that like win Olympic medals <laughs> yeah. that, are, that are probably sl slinging some ding. I don't think you would say that. I don't think you would say that if Usain Bolt was here. Yeah. I feel like I feel like he could he could flop a pretty decent argument on the table. <laughs> I bet you, though, he gets really hard. You know what I mean? Where no, whatever size it is, Tom Cruise. Oh, no, oh, yeah. that I agree. No, I feel like if you have an average to under average, then, yeah, that thing should stand to attention whenever requested. Whoop! Yeah, you could see his shoes become unlaced. Because you can tell when gets everybody hard. gets over, when they start clicking 9 and 10, a lot of porn guys are, you know, 75% chub because that's too much blood to get into, you know I mean, your, your, your baby arm dick. Yeah, that's what out. I tell my wife all the time. And that's, that's what I've the told problem? every woman I've ever been. That's the problem. It's not of, you. It's, what, you. It's just how fat my dick is. <laughs> no, you, it's the opposite. It's that you It's too. You don't want all that extra flab, all that extra, ha, all that extra cock that's only half hard. Who needs uh, all of this? Extra cock is it? I'd like to be in a band called Extra Cock. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds like we're bringing some fun, you know? Yeah.
So, but then, okay, and I'll finish the, this little story, and then we can pass this. Oh, okay, sorry. Go ahead. So he goes, he gets these fish. They say that he goes into a restroom. This is their these stores, and then he exits without this fish. And then someone said they walked into a bathroom and saw the fish sitting in the garbage, doing what? With the used rubber hanging out of its mouth? That's what I said. I was like, I, is, is he trying to not get it pregnant? Why would you wear? Yeah, why would you okay. wear rubber with a dead fish's mouth? You can't get it pregnant, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you can't get herpes from but, it. But do you Scales? know what? He strikes me as a very cautious, careful, germaphobic kind of person. The fact that there's a condom in the fish's mouth <laughs> lends a little credence in my mind. To this <laughs> I just feel it would catch on the teeth. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've got. Yeah, I know. Sure, we've all dreamt of fucking fish, but there's practical considerations. Maybe it's more of like a <laughs> kinky thing where he puts the fish in front of him where it's looking at him, and he jerks off at the fish and like says like really mean things to it. Yells maybe, at maybe it. you could wrap the fish around it and jerk off, but the scales are not going to play ball with that. Now maybe, I hate to be I, gross, but maybe he, the condom is ass? because he doesn't want to get fish guts in his pee hole. Maybe I he puts a that, condom over true. its head and puts it in his anus. <laughs> I honestly don't think that any of these are wrong because uh. it depends on what he's it depends on what he's doing depends on whether or not because he's still deep into Scientology so he might it might be some form of head game that he plays with himself that says if I can get hard fuck this fish or have this fish fuck me I am still showing true mastery of my body and my intentions. Oh wow! That's so the thinking to, of a to work on his craft the, to the highest level. Maybe his sensei in acting like some crazy <laughs> Chinese guy that had a really long mustache taught him a long time ago that you must always make passionate love to fish uh, to always prove acting skill. Okay, fine. I, but did, did that sensei also say, and you must complete the act in the bathroom at Vons? Like, why couldn't he get the fish delivered? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in the original tablets. Vons weren't around when those tablets were first etched. Maybe he, so now maybe he really... Changed. Maybe he really hates having sex in public restrooms and was like, this adds even more. He's like, I'm going to act like I can't think of anything better than having sex with a fidget oh, right. Or right. he doesn't want his house to smell like fish and use condoms. Yeah, I, maybe I, his butler threatened to quit <laughs> the last time he went through a fucking school. I will clean like, these okay, up no this longer. This is enough. I Googled Tom Cruise fish just to see. And the top result is... Nicole Kidman and Tom Cruise's son is obsessed with posting fish on Instagram. Oh, so maybe I'm there not, is a connection. I'm not touching Cry that. for help. Oh, my God. Cry for help. Stay away from <laughs> that. Sending <one>. signals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's the new Britney, like the Britney Instagram signals. Yeah. <laughs> you like Britney at all? I, yeah, I love her. She's great. You know, she's very, I, you know, I wasn't into her that. I'm not like necessarily a fan of her music, but she seems to be a lovely woman. Yeah, I really like her. I wish I do too. I wish that I could have sex with her, but I feel like at this point, I'm not sure if she knows she's having sex with me. I think that she might be a very confused woman yeah. because her boyfriend that she's forced to be in her videos also looks very like kind of confused. And it's a shame because, man, what a fucking if anything, she works hard. And she really can dance. And that's hard as fuck, especially a Vegas, that whole Vegas run. That was very difficult. She kind of reminds me a little bit of an Aussie. Like Ozzy Osbourne thing, where you know, I mean, at one point she was this monster, and then something happened where it's like little piece is missing, and we love him for that. And I feel like for a girl, it's a little bit of a different angle loving someone for being a couple of sandwiches short of the picnic again. I think it's also assumed that Ozzy kind of drank and drugged himself insane. But that's not, sort of are we not that? assuming that that's what happened to Brit? Like I felt like Britney cracked from. She didn't doing seem like some... much of a partier, though. And that's what, oh, like, I um, no, I, recently... I, I, I've heard stories. Yeah, that's oh, what okay. I have, too. Not well, I was Tom very Cruise happy. Fish level, but... <laughs> She's, she is now currently dating a fish on heroin. <laughs> I was very happy to see a um, friend of the show, Craig Ferguson, going viral recently. He did? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, an, old, an old monologue from his late night show just resurfaced and went viral of him just being... It's like from 2007. He's like, look... Everybody is shitting on this poor girl. She's a she's basically a fucking baby. She's in her early 20s. Like, why is everybody shitting on somebody who's having, like, clearly mental problems? This is yeah. awful. Yes. Yeah. It, it was cool to see, like, you know, anytime you see somebody you like trending, you're like, oh, oh shit, what'd they do? And it was it was cool to see him trend for something good. I mean, that, he's a class act. You're not going to get anything but brilliance out of that guy. For sure. But I never thought I would ever see Jay Leno appear malevolent until they started doing that thing where now they show him 
telling an old school Britney's crazy joke, but then they do the inverse filter where he, it becomes evil, you know, oh, where he's no. saying it, but then all of a sudden, he, and I start to realize like, oh, that was really mean. They just needed to put that filter on that. <laughs> yeah. And I could see that that was actually very mean. And, you know, you're just a guy in a suit and Britney's working very hard. And it's very sad. I knew a guy who worked at a pretty big hot nightclub in Los Angeles when right before the Leave Britney Alone stuff. And he said that he personally witnessed her like drinking so much that she was passed out against a wall. And the person she'd come with was kind of like spoon feeding her pasta, like with oh. spaghetti to oh, try to God. get her something in what her stomach. What a stupid friend. Cocaine works way better. So yeah. stupid. <laughs> and yeah, honestly, dude. I guess and your house, the cocaine was probably better than the spaghetti. Yeah. I just, I just can't imagine what it's like to to achieve that level of like that pop mastery, right? That you look at a stadium of 50,000 people and go something that's like, and you have total control over that group of people. I would go, I would be a fucking mad person. I get fucking, I feel like a Lord with an audience of like 600 people. I'm like, I am Mussolini. Like it goes to the top of my head. I can't imagine what it would be like if you were a like, one of those like megaliths if of I, popularity. If I was at that level, I would go to the fish market and I would put <laughs> every single fish they had mm -hmm. in my anus with no <laughs> condoms, and then I would fucking <laughs> shot them out everywhere at the at TMZ doing mad and press. And that's how you keep the Mission Impossible franchise going because you you show what you have what it takes to do ten four hour films on a uh, similar topic. Most recently on last podcast on the left, Henry, you all were talking about lake monsters. Jason, did you know yes. that Australia has an indigenous lake monster? Have we ever talked about the bunyip? Oh yeah. Yeah. The bunyip. You, the bunyip is your Nessie. Deal with it. Are you like a cryptid person? Do you know, are you into this shit? Like all of the, of the, the fantasy monsters that people see? I really, I like Sasquatch a lot. And, yep. uh, he's popular. Yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Sasquatch, and I like saying it like that. We've, we've, I do um, think that the Bunyip is, unfortunately, for it as adventurous and a wonderful place as Australia, the Bunyip is surprisingly stationary. Yeah, because I know there's a place called Bunyip. I didn't know. Oh. If, I, like, I used to drive past Bunyip. I had a girlfriend that lived in Bunyip. That could be the next Jason Ellis Show movie is uh, The Woodsman versus The Bunyip. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you've heard uh, there's another person in Australia that's a pretty legendary monster, The Woodsman. Maybe you could do a podcast on that. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this like, is that an actual cryptid? Is, like a, is that a thing? Or are no, you joking with me? No, it's a, mo a, fucking it's a movie that uh, Tully and I made a long time ago about uh, Amer American tourists coming to Australia and they're attacked by this uh, monster guy known as the Woodsman. He's a mythical creature who has a ginormous boner and a snake coming out of his ass. That's fucking great. And he just murders everybody <laughs> in brutal I'm, ways. It's I'm on sold. YouTube, Henry. You can yeah. watch it. Oh, yeah, I'm sold. I'll watch that. Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. Have you seen Wolf Creek? A lot of yes. people go missing in Australia. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Well, it's pretty easy since it's a good story because the thing with Australia is there's a giant middle area where there is nobody. So, yeah, if you were out there and one crazy outback dude with a rifle wanted to fuck with you and kill you, yeah, he totally could. It's a little bit... Like, I feel like that's why those stories come out. I don't know how true it is when, you know, Bush dudes grab uh, Swedish tourists <laughs> and rape them in a tent and skin them and fucking put Not their face. every day. Yeah, yeah they, I don't know. I mean, they got to take a break. I mean, some of these guys got to work. You know what I found is that people who are from remote, like rural places are terrified that when they come to a city, somebody's going to stab and murder them. And people who are from cities, when they go to rural places, they're sure some guy's going to take him back to his cabin and have his way with him for 20 years. <laughs> I am terrified of the countryside. I hate the country. I'm from Queens. My wife is all, we're both city people, but both of us at the same time, we're like, we should go and see the, the outback. And I was like, I think we die immediately. Yeah, no, like, I've, if I had a dime for every American that told me that I, I that they can't believe I made it out alive because because of how many venomous creatures that are just jumping at me twenty four seven, the amount of spider and snake fights I had as a baby, it was really incredible. It yeah. makes you strong. It makes you a champion. Yeah, that's but why we're so. That's why when you meet an Australian, they seem so strong because they've been fighting creatures their whole life. It's actually not <laughs> fucking like that. Like I, I don't. 
kid. <laughs> no, dude, we went to Australia and I literally was just like, all right, Natalie, just be careful because I've heard that snakes jump here. <laughs> like, I had no fucking clue what to yeah. expect. I literally thought it was going to be, I thought I was going to see a plesiosaur in yeah. Australia. And then when we got there, we didn't see Jack. I was like, no. oh, this is like a city with all of these like smiling people. First time I came to America, I got drunk with a bunch of pretty girls in San Diego and told them a story about drop bears where uh, <laughs> bears that have rabies will drop out of trees and land on your face and maul you to death. And everybody believed me. The whole room <laughs> gathered around. <laughs> and from that, that was the day I realized that we speak English, but you guys still think that we could be fucking anything like we could i could just yeah man we're, we fuck sheep everybody does that's like the they thing we do it. nobody nobody questions it everyone well, thinks that we're super gross i think there's a part of us that thinks that like oh you're on an island so you don't do anything city people do but then in a way aren't all continents islands yeah yeah aren't we yeah. all can we all just get along and we all just Can't floating we? around the sea come on that's it man we're all just on plates dog and guess what, man? It's, you know, fucking we're all good. The sun's going to cool at the same time for all of us. Hey, do you like being naked on TV? Is that crazy for you? I used to do it a lot more. Oh. I, used to do a lot, I used to do a lot of nude on stage. That's kind of how it oh, was. Okay. I, I, something happened. I think it was because when I was really, really heavy, I really... There's something about inflicting my nudity on an audience. Yeah, fair that enough. That was that was like fun to do. Yeah. Like it allowed me to, because I was feeling insecure about the way I looked or how I felt about myself. It was fun to use it as like a weapon. Yeah. Was, was something specific prompt your nudity or at some point in a live show or you're just like, all right, time to take my pants off. It's it, there was a sketch that we used to do. My, I used to, I was in a sketch group for many years called murder fist. And there was a sketch that we used to close with, which is about a group of guys at a boardroom talking about where's the end of the year numbers. Patrick has the numbers. Where's Patrick? I come in as Patrick. I'm completely nude holding my balls. And I tell a monologue about how I was pushed down in the parking lot, stripped, molested. And then they took the numbers from me. And then the man who did it walks in with the numbers and then tells the same whole story again, but like positively about how fun it was for him to do what he did to me. <laughs> and they all love him. You know what I mean? Cause I'm the yeah. most pathetic person in the world. But then I auditioned for Saturday night live and I went in to do the studio test and I did that bit on the studio test. Oh, wow. And there is nothing like the cavernous silence oh, no. of Studio 8H. It did work because people did kind of went, ah, like they, I got one of those. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's not what you want. But then apparently Lauren was like, I like the naked bit. Okay. So it's like, all right, at least that worked. But it, I mean, and that's why 10 seasons later, SNL's never been stronger. See, yeah, you're one of, you've been one of the greats. I don't mind telling you. That. <laughs> so I, I, because I uh, was not a guy that always took my clothes off and ran around to be the humorous guy. And then uh, Howard Stern uh, asked me to be on his show, but it was more because I pitched that I would put M and M's in my foreskin, which meant <laughs> that I was going to be naked. So my my debut of hey. I'm one of those guys that'll fucking show you his dick if you if you'll pay attention to me. It like it was it, it all sort of happened as my pants came down and I was looking at the desk where <laughs> Howard was and I'm like, wow, just I've I've yeah. I, I've looked up to this guy for quite some time now and I've seen him as an actual live person for about seven minutes and here's my dick. Yeah, and that's like, why I stopped. I stopped because I became the naked guy. It was the same thing where oh. it was like, it became, oh, Henry will do anything that's fucked up. See, I was trying and to get it, to this question from this. This is going to help me because I thought now that I've got this podcast game and uh, I might be on uh, uh, Dak Shepard's podcast and there's bigger yeah, shows. And I'm thinking if I go on a bigger show, like when I was on radio and Howard Stern had me as a guest, is this the time to put M&Ms in my full skin again? Like, Am I? Should I put a bunch of nipple clamps on my wiener for Dax? I think you should give Dax a predator. What's a predator? <laughs> when you drop your pants and you spread your ass cheeks and show your bunghole. <laughs> Just show Dax my bunghole. He'll never see it coming. <laughs> He'll never ultimate, talk to me ever again. The ultimate move. I always thought it was called the dirty telescope. 
But oh, you, you have to. Uh, when you, I don't. I think you're strong enough. You're okay. I, you're don't, don't think do, you're you have saying, to be nude. Don't, I don't do think nude. You have guy. to be. Right. No, I think that your nudity is you wield it as you will, and you know your your nudity is big money now. Oh yeah. Sure. I mean, nudity for this show, like we just did a stunt today where uh, I spat fire between Kevin's legs in a headstand while he was in like a pink. What was that? Like a they pink. Hot, they were your wife's hot pants. Oh, that's yeah. what that was. Yeah. <laughs> if those look familiar. <laughs> so, no, man, you don't got it. You don't got it. I mean, Dax, it'll be chill. Yeah. But it, it's weird because I feel like there, we're also in this space where there is sort of a lot of clamoring for attention and people do want to make a, a do they do want to like make a scene and i think a part of the reason why is why they'll like end up go, like becoming like weird alt-right or some kind of bullshit in order to get like pull focus like look i'm different i'm different yeah but yeah. i don't think you got to no it's i wrong. just i think it's all um the nerve-wracking experience of being in the podcast game it, it with such short notice and my <laughs> yeah, no man my it's hustle short notice <laughs> it, it it like I'm trying to say yeah. it, I'm trying to say I didn't I I'm trying to not say I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking it was the dumbest <laughs> shit because I listened to you every day and then it was like as it was going I was like, do you tell me? I don't like this is this is dumb as fuck and then you're thrown right in. We actually. It's not that it's comparable, but like Adult Swim, we used to do a, a stream for Adult Swim, adultswim.com, yeah. and we used to go, and we did it for four and a half years. We loved this show. You know, same thing. All of the execs were all like, we love it. We love it. And then it was apparently all of the employees got to work on a Monday. They said, we're having a big meeting at the end of the day. Yeah. They got the meetings together. They're like, good news. We are going to have so much more office space. Like, it's like the way they, they kind of spun it. They're like, yeah. we're moving in a fun new direction that doesn't include this branch of Adult <laughs> Swim anymore. Fuck. And then fired the entire room. And then we were left. now. So now we're doing, for last stream on the left, we do it on Tuesday nights, which is we have been tr scrambling to recreate the infrastructure of oh, okay. like an inside your home movie studio, oh, shit. which is apparently very complicated. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Yeah, I mean, I I did... The, I mean, Same I, shit. Yeah, I built a studio in five days. Well, I got I hired somebody and they came in here and and put this amazing thing together in, and then the cameras that I'd already had from trying to make a YouTube presence while I yes. had a job on Sirius that they wouldn't give <laughs> yes. me fucking a... They wouldn't give me a hard line. To, so it's so weird. I, I know. It, it doesn't all, make... I know. It, it they never are, did. I think they were frustrated because they are they are still in the old world. Yeah. And then they couldn't figure out how to branch into this world, which is so fucking funny to me. Because, because they didn't want to, we, though. They didn't... It's not like somebody... I'm telling you, I've tried... I've been in a, in a, at a table telling him that everybody's doing this, and if you don't do that, you it's, it, it just can't s sustain. The it has future to be is their idea. They have to have the brilliant fucking idea that oh, we should do podcasts too, which is what they are trying to do. Now they're now they're scrambling. Yeah, I know. Sirius XM is scrambling. But I remember begging for a job at Sirius XM. We last podcast was we went to Sirius XM like that was like one of the first big meetings we ever had. Yeah, when we had one, and the guy we had one of those meetings where the the development guy from Sirius XM is like a million and millions of people are going to listen to your show, but we're just not ready for you. And I, I was just like, what that. does that mean? We just just telling us no, just tell us no. Like I think at <laughs> one point it was a really good idea, and the and the world or America shifted to use it in the cars and all that stuff, and there was a big. There was a time there when I first started as a DJ when I just left the Tony Hawk show to to be a DJ where I think that the the listenership was intent and intensely focused on always listening to that. The podcast world had not touched anything yet. And I could tell from being a DJ, I was playing music most of the time and then I'd talk for <laughs> two minutes in between songs and people were f freaking out on me. Whoa, dude, you're the guy that fucking made up the fucking chocolate pizza. I'm like, what? <laughs> How the fuck do you know yeah, me? It's, it was way bigger. And that was just like some little punk channel where we weren't even being promoted. It wasn't a show. I was a DJ. But what y'all bring to podcasts is which is different, which is what we try to bring to podcasts, which is a radio energy, which is you guys know how to actually do two to three hours of show. 
yeah. entertainingly keep up the pace, which is the biggest block. I think that people that just do podcasts still, I think there's still a level of being like, oh, a couple of standups will put up a, a couple of microphones and they, you know, we can do whatever, but it's actually a, it's a honed skill to know how to move things along, do all of this bullshit. You, you are the, I think that's a natural transition. It's funny you bring that up too, because I've been listening to a lot of those guys that you're referring to, all of them, and some of them really good, but I can oh, tell yeah. there's definitely a very relaxed, I barely care to bring this show out to the point where I was even thinking, should I come across like, I don't know, maybe, maybe we've got a guest, maybe we don't. Like, is that, would that be more attractive to the, to the viewer if I, <laughs> If I like forget that I'm here and I'm like, what? Yeah, I look, I'm pretty tired. Right. I had a big day. Because Henry, I heard on another podcast that your show is actually far too professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. And we we do, it's too crammed with material, yeah. which is, a, I mean, I think there is a thing to be said. I think if we were a longer show, it would be way more like easygoing. Like if we did like a Rogan or a Stern style, like three to four hour long, like you'd want, there would be gaps in it. But I just don't believe in it. I've also been called a try hard. So I don't know what to tell you because I think that you're not. I think I, I hit shit with enthusiasm and I am a passionate person <laughs> and I only do shit that I want to fill my time with 110 percent. And I want to be as good at my fucking show. I want to be better at my show than anybody else that could be doing the show. So if that makes me try hard or makes, makes me want you, I want you to a, show you my show. It makes you a genius. No. It makes you a very smart human being because that is. You get one shot. Maybe you do go to a mystical place and smoke blunts with Tupac later on. But right now on this planet, this is your one shot of you being you. Why would you fart it away? Why would I fucking half ass everything I do? Like, I feel like you get stuck in a rut of half ass and then you just, you're comfortable in that pocket. But I, I'm, I'm with you hundred percent. Everything no, I do, why not make the fucking effort to go bananas? Like why, like even this morning I was like, man, I'm going to go buy kerosene or or i don't even know what it is and people are dming me saying 151 and then and then i look uh, and then i google it and it says, yeah oh my god my friend gave himself like a, a joker smile okay trying to because like, i googled it and people it's said that's the worst one yeah. you can do and then when i finally i went out live on instagram and i was gonna spray some fire before i spat it at his dick and, and i went live and there was just like a hundred Hundreds of people telling me, no, not that fuel. Use <laughs> use rubbing alcohol. And I'm thinking, oh man. I, they, like, I, I don't think they're trying to set my face on fire. I think it's just crazy how many people don't know, but will swear. Because if I don't know, like if you will, if you're like, hey, for the show, I'm gonna breathe fire and I've never done it before. I've got 151, I've got this. Uh, which one should I do? If I don't know, I'm not gonna be like, 151 for sure, you're gonna be great. Like I, <laughs> it seems like people that like the show or like me don't mind it if I die. I mean, <laughs> they just want you, they want you hovering on the edge of total obliteration yeah. at all times. Yeah, I would like, just like to say I'm very glad you didn't go with the rubbing alcohol. Cause I feel like that's one of the one of the ones that like <laughs> when you spat it between my legs, some flex like flex of burning. Yeah alcohol could have landed on my fucking taint or bunghole and perhaps right. sealed yeah, it. Honestly, I can't imagine what it would feel like to have that tiny orb of flame just land on my butthole. Like I would that, do that. You'd, remember, you'd know the feeling for the rest of your fucking life. I would, oh, yeah. For this podcast, I would let somebody uh, breathe fire into my anus. I mean, out of the four options right now, I'm That's trying to do the math video, right? in my... Oh, of course. That's but a I'm, real show. <laughs> I'm trying to do the math in my head of which one I would least prefer if the fire got on my dick, nuts, taint, or anus. Are we talking about when it gets on your dick, taint, or anus that it fucking burns it, or are you just saying it's you, it goes in the fire? Because I, I, I believe if I go Phew, with the with the gasoline shit or whatever it is that I'm spitting yeah. on your crutch nude, mm -hmm. I don't think you burn. I think you singe your hair, but I don't think your skin is... No, no, no. I mean, like... Of course, the whole like if you held a lighter up to a hand, a, a can of hairspray and shot it into the, into the yeah, that's not going to really catch anything. But if a, a a speck of burning fluid, like napalm, oh, okay. kind of like still on fire, yeah, landed dude. and burned for a little bit, not like I'm on fire for fucking five minutes, but enough to leave a mark or a blister. Well, I, I, I from, guess taint, right? I guess no, I'll take the taint. I, really, I would put that 
the one I'd be least concerned about, followed in some order by penis, penis, head, and scrotum. I feel like my anus is the delicatest of all the flowers. You're wrong. Yes. As a guy that does tons of the anus stuff, the ring <laughs> area is is not is not that. Like once you're in here, it's not that. I would rather get burnt on the anus. Right. I feel like maybe when I take a shit later on, that might I regretted it. But the actual yeah. pain of the initial burn, oh. the penis is like the head of your penis burn. Fuck that. That would really hurt. And you I, might have a scar. I, my main goal in life is to keep as much fire away from the tip of my penis as possible. <laughs> a lot of good advice <laughs> from you today. I don't know if you always do this. There's but. plenty of room for both of us in the podcast sphere. Yeah. I am just so afraid just because there's just there's just not much of it. And, and oh, I no, you have a little penis. Estate. Oh, yeah. Hey, let me ask you when you're nude all the time, are you nude with a little uh, G string or are you swinging dick as well? I was fully nude. Okay. I only ever did, except this one time, I did this show called Five uh, new, Nude Boys Improvising. Right. <laughs> Finally. Ended up, I ended up, it was kind of like how to, how to put this, like I sort of was groomed. You know what I mean? But I didn't know it at the time. I just thought it was fun. And is it is it grooming if you think it's fun at the time? I don't know. Are you I talking about my... trimming your pubes? No. No, no, no. <laughs> it was the man that the executive producer of it was a man that was like, I think it would be incredible because it was nude boys singing was a Broadway show that was out at the time. And he was like, nude boys improvising. And we're like, okay. And he's like, we'll sell out this whole show. And so we all did this show where it was this improv dudes where we had to come up with reasons to take off a piece of clothing in each scene. Oh, and man. then by the end, the work up to that, by the end of the show, we were completely nude. That's doing awesome. a scene. But the guy the guy who was there, like he showed up at the end, the guy who was an executive producer, like we were excited to continue the run, but he got like weird kind of gin drunk. And he was just like, you beautiful boys. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful <laughs> boys. And he like did stuff where he was like petting another dude, like oh. those things. And I was just like, oh, I thought this was a comedy show. Oh my God. I think I'm a prostitute. Let yeah. me see this your was, taint. <laughs> nothing worse than being molested as an adult. This was the showgirls so of improv comedy. I just walked into this. I thought I was going to be a star. Yeah, no, you're, you're Elizabeth Berkeley. Are you familiar with predators? It never happens to men who looks like me. You know what I mean? I don't understand. Honestly, it was kind of nice though in the end. I felt kind of wanted. You ever think about trimming your shoulder hair? Man. You know, I'm torn because I have a stipulation in all of my contracts that I won't shave my back because I have full I have full back hair. Yeah. I'm completely coated in it. No, I know. You you're on television <laughs> nude, yeah. nude all a lot i don't so yeah i know it's cr i think it's so crazy that you that, that that that's a thing that you can do now i'm like wow he's just there I mean, anus crack talking to this lady for a long <laughs> ass time they're not yeah, blurring dude. out a goddamn thing this is gnarly <laughs> as a guy that just started to get back hair like my wife trims it if i had shoulder hair like that i just i get weird about neck hair I, so it's getting I, longer, dude. It's getting longer and longer. And then what I find is the you way wanna, my hair is spreads, it's like I get one hair in an area where there's no hair, that it's kind of like a pinion point. Yes. But oh. then other hairs jump <laughs> to that it's, area and then slowly cover me. But it's such a part of my personality. Dreadlock it. <laughs> it's, all right. I guess I guess it's who when I, I saw you naked and a pan down and went up to your anus <laughs> and then you did have... All this added back hair on top of your fat ass and shit. I was like, yeah, yeah it is. A, it's like a fucking, it's a one, two, three combination. Like it's like one on top of the other. And then you're like, whoa, is that hair? I'm like, wow, even. Yeah. So yeah, you are funny naked. Dude, Good point. It's a, it is a blessing in a way because then you can just show up with no clothes on. And you've entertained a room. And now I can feel the power of what it's like to be a beautiful woman. Wow. Good point. You know, you entertain a room with, I can entertain a room with my breasts. Yes. Which I try to do Kevin all, at all times. Kevin complains about his tits all the time. And Don't I was bro. trying to say, I'm like, this guy is on TV. Everybody sees him and he's got big swinging titties and shoulder male hair. Male tits are, you know who had huge male tits? Who? Napoleon. Nice. See That's how he's figured guy. out a way to find how his tits are very powerful you're mm -hmm. like Napoleon. So now he thinks when he sees his tits, he's like, I could conquer the world. <laughs> yeah. You are like, man, look at my fat tits. <laughs> Got think about Napoleon had fat you know who tits. Had big tits? Who? L. Ron, L. Ron Hubbard. 
Oh my goodness. L. Ron Hubbard, who invented what do you do? Scientology. Scientology. Oh no. He started a religion. You're a liar. You're a bitch faced liar. <laughs> <laughs> he's an imaginative leader. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that is. It's a it's a man with many solutions. And we're all just clamps. The ultimate car salesman. You ruled it. Yeah. So think good. I think that you should feel better about your tits. Hey, yeah, you don't have show your tits. Yeah. Love your tits. He does. Oh, I show them. They they come out for sure. And it's not so much the tits that are the problem, it's the nipples. So, like, when I get out of the shower and it's still kind of cold, it doesn't look that bad. It's like, all right, I just have a chest. I'm a dude. And then once it, I warm up and my nipples are like, and it's like, oh, shit. Oh, do you have big puffies? Yeah, dude. Cool. I hate them. How are Napoleon's oh, nipples? Weird, dude. I have fucking, my nipples are the size of fucking silver dollar pancakes, man. I have huge nipples. <laughs> You should feel better like, about but it. I don't. But I wish I liked them like sucked or anything. I don't like any of that. Like they are just purely ornamental, though. You know, have you ever done BDSM? No. Yeah, I have too much hair. You see, what? Leather, what? That's not the straps. They don't they get caught in all the rope. Le- they don't. They love that. They'll probably pull on it and shit. I know. I I went to there was I forget where we were and we stumbled into it was in Sheboygan. Wisconsin. Yeah. We went there was a bear bar that the, a couple of guys went into. It was like one of these places we went, yeah. and we walked in and I was just like, oh, oh you no, kill. this is what if I felt like a, a gazelle yes, in the you Sahara. Are. That's how I feel when I go to gay bars. They're like, whoa, it's a straight guy. Everybody wants to bone me. And I'm like, wow, this is what it's like to be pretty. Yeah. It's so so awesome. scared. I was also, but then I felt the male gaze for the first time, truly. And I was like, oh no, that's why. Oh God, we're an alpha predator. Each one just like smelling vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna, oh God. They're going to hunt the bear. <laughs> oh, please. I'm an endangered species. Yeah. They're going to take you down. Take you in the parking lot. Deal with you. <laughs> so scared. Yeah, I'm so scared. I would be too if I wasn't gay. I mean, that's- yeah, I know. I mean, I to, if I could, I just, I just didn't know how easy I would have had it if I was gay. Mm-hmm. And then you see it, and you're like, holy shit! I would have just been a fucking just a spinning, loving, like just like full on, just like so in love with me. If I could have truly absorbed, it's sad that to adoration. know that the women of the world don't do that. Like, why can't I go to a bar where it's just all the ladies are looking for big, fat, hairy guys, and whenever they show up, they just get plowed. It's like, man, <laughs> calm down, ladies, calm. You know what I mean? Obviously, there's enough to go around, so just fucking calm down. But no, ladies are gonna be like, no, you talk to me, and maybe you get you know have some money and a career. It's like, fuck, man. Whatever. We gotta work harder, but honestly, it makes us smarter. And yeah. the, but about every five years or so. There's like a revamp of the uh, the dad bod. Everybody likes yes. this, the chubby guy. Like this yep. comes up, but every five years or so, that's when I will like at, get acting work. It's that once it come, once it rolls around, then everyone's like, ah, oh, we kind of like another kind of fat, kind of chubby guy, and then you get in oh. that way. And I think it works with women as well and men. I've heard hot chicks say that they like um, bellies on guys, oh, and, yeah. they, and they weren't lying. So. That's it, you know, because I don't know how many guys say they like bellies on girls. I think it's all cute. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I've, I'm a soul fucker. I've always stated that. It's about a vibe. Yeah, I mean, sometimes get don't older. get me wrong. I'll get you know really pretty. Then duh, fair enough. But also, sometimes I'm like, this is just gonna be good. Don't care yeah. what anybody else thinks. Yeah, I'm always right too. Oh yeah, look at that soul. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, yes, I start thinking about ripping into a slim gym. Before I- <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Women always like to be damaged. You could show them how delicate you are before you go. They'll be like, hey, hey look, look, you see what I can do to the slim gym. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no. A display of meat eating is always a turn on for the women, I find. I show up with a T bone in my hand and just maul that fucking thing. And then I go, Um, You're next. This could be you. Yeah. (laughs) See this T bone? Imagine if this was your snatch. (laughs) Cool. Thanks, Jason. (laughs) Oh, cool. Wow. Great. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, can I just also just apologize to immediately assume you'd know anybody or that you'd you'd know anything about fucking fish? Yeah, you should. Because that's fucked I, up, man. I know I'm pretty kinky, but I'm not an no, animal fucker, and I don't I'm know. Sorry, Tom Cruise. I know it's not about that. I just figured that if I just looked to you for wisdom, and I honestly thought that because it was such a puzzle that I wanted it to see you ruminate about it, that would help me. Yeah. Well, like I said, I believe Led Zeppelin. Put a fish in somebody's vagina. In a groupie, that really happened. Shark, yeah. yeah. Shark died. Yeah. Uh, let's see that. See? 
I don't. I feel bad. One time I got really drunk in Mexico fishing for two days, and somebody I caught a shark, and then someone cut the heart out and gave it to me, and I ate it because it was still beating. And then people but isn't escape. That, that's like first blood, though. That's like the most primal thing that you can do. I like that kind of shit. I think that'd be kind of cool. I'm not a hunter, and I am not outside person. But at the same time, I'd lick it at least. I think licking it would have been a better idea for sure. But like I said, it, I'd been awake for two days. But I don't. It, it's a weird thing if people are like, "Well, shock heart." Like I remember that, and I'm like, "Eh, I'd rather, I'd rather that one wasn't on a video, I guess, because I feel sorry for the shark sometimes." I mean, I know he was dead by the time that was happening, and you know, some other shark was probably going to eat him later on. It's a, it's a dog eat dog world in DC, but I do feel a little bit bad about making it, you know, because I didn't get right. If I would have been different if I had to ate it to receive the power of the shark so yeah. that I could dominate fucking whatever the hell it is that I'm trying to do. If I had some bullshit excuse like that, but I... If there I, was a ritual, like if there was yeah. something that was fueling it. Yeah, like a respectful thing to it, but I, I, like, I'm like, i not going to lie. I was drunk. That's why I ate it. Yeah, but then afterwards, you know, at least you have that experience. You know what shark heart tastes like when it probably tastes like absolute tastes, dog shit. It tastes like um, a girl's period. <laughs> it was like biting a piece of tampon that was still beating. <laughs> still at the same time, though, I can feel the iron. Yeah, there was a lot of iron in it. And when it went down my neck, I felt it go. That's cool. I know, right? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. You're back. You're back. You're back. I think it's cool, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> All right, I bounce back from that one. Hell yeah, let's eat some shark. <laughs> <laughs> I won't eat shark though because it's one of those. I, I'm afraid to eat it because I know that it's like you're not supposed to. I have to understand. I know. I am one of those. I will eat any animal on the face of the planet. I'm a. I love being the super carnivore, but I am trying to limit the animals. Like my wife has begged for the life of the octopus that I'm not allowed to eat octopus anymore because they're too. They're too smart. Uh, oh, yeah. They might be related to aliens, I believe. That's my prediction. But which is the reason why I think we should be fucking eating each and every fucking one of them because they are just waiting. They're spies. They're just waiting and they're playing. You think eventually when the aliens uh, emerge and they're half uh, octopus, but they probably stand up and they're way bigger, uh, they're, they're, they're going to start eating us immediately? That's the we're going to be fucking... We're going to be done. We're well, going to be done. So the aliens come, they all look like Javier Bardem in a Pirates of the Caribbean movie and snap their fingers <laughs> and all the octopi come out of the ocean. Ooh. <laughs> That'd be kind of dope. It would be kind of dope, except for the death of all of us. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't. The think first couple days, though, I'd be like, fuck yeah, dude. Look at that octopus guy. Eat the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, maybe kill yourself before it eats you in a violent, like, grotesque way and, and just enjoy some sweet CNN footage of some you know people being eaten alive by giant octopus aliens. I would, I would put it on mute. Play "It's a Wonderful World" like over like on its stereo system. What this quarantine has taught me is that if I have a good enough bottle of bourbon, I can slide into the night and not know. Like like if an asteroid was coming in the night, I could drink enough bourbon and smoke enough weed that I would just drift into nothingness, and then the world would explode, and I wouldn't know. I completely yeah. agree with that. I was drunk one time on an airplane where there was crazy turbulence, and I was super drunk. It was back when people didn't say you've had Stop. enough, and they stopped giving it to you. <laughs> they just gave it to me, and uh, the I was listening to Metallica, and the turbulence was so bad I didn't realize because I was rocking out so hard. And I look over and there was a couple holding hands crying because they, <laughs> they thought they were going to die. And I was, and I was like, da, 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 and I was, and they looked at me and I was like, wow, they got to think I'm a fucking madman. You know, but I, I was really drunk. It's one of the things, watch out when that happens to me. It would fucking comfort me. It did. It did. Like I, as a guy that doesn't drink, if there is time for like, if everyone's like, Hey, Meteor, we're fucked for sure. I mean, alien octopus, everybody for sure. Maybe alien octopus, I'm probably gonna shoot because I like to. I like to fight back, but yeah. I definitely am gonna fight drunk and like if anybody can get me any smack or anything, I'll do it. Like, let's fucking. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm doing all the things that you've got. Just crap out while I'm fighting. Sounds like a rock and roll glorious way to go. I just, I, I know I'm gonna die. I just don't want to be here for when it happens. Yeah. I can get down with that. Well said. Yeah. 
I'm just kind of drift, dude. I, I, I always said like that fantasy of like getting to 90 and trying heroin. Like, yeah, Cause I've never tried any of those things. Cause I find that what I know about heroin is that it seems to make people incredibly boring. Right. Not to them, but yeah, to everybody yeah, else around them. To yeah. Everybody else. But yeah, yeah, if you're a- in hospital and nobody wants to talk to you anymore because you're old and lame, now's the time. Yeah, that's right. You know, who's already boring old people. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> if, super boring a video game be- or even that fucking the uh, mask thing yeah. vr and yeah and just the the press the button and the and the juice just keeps going into the veins Whew, Set sounding up. good man yeah. honestly it sounds so relaxing i want to go and when i go i'm like fucking you fucking woo you know what i mean like i want to be like fucking tell and tell <laughs> You know, Jimmy to fucking kiss my ass. <laughs> and then I go to sleep, you know? Like, I don't want to yeah. fucking, uh, help no. me. Like, fuck that. No, I don't want to be like, let me die. Let me die. I want to not know I'm dying. We'll get there, though. But my main goal, but I do believe on some point, it's not necessarily that we go someplace, but that we are, maybe our experience continues. But I think that the, the, whatever happens, I mean, we won't know until it's too late. Yeah, this is a cool way to this is a cool way to do a show. Yeah, you know, just talk about this the inevitable, our inevitable deaths. I try not to think about it. A doctor told me like a couple of days ago that I'm gonna die of like some crazy heart problem that I have, or or, or at least like have to have a heart transplant. And uh, so it's super in my face right now. But oh, I, buddy, I don't. It's it's fine. You might get hit by a fucking car. It, and, Wait, and, I'm, you- and if I do get a heart transplant And if anybody that survives heart transplants I'm that guy for sure Oh yeah Oh yeah Are you going to get one of those baboon hearts? I would take whatever one works best yeah. But that sounds like it would make sense for me It helped Christian Slater find love Oh yeah <laughs> Okay well then that's interesting And maybe I could Maybe I could move to the jungle and be in love with the baboon. No, I think it was Marissa Tomei. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then, yeah, that's definitely a, de- a definite update yeah. over baboons. <laughs> Get a hot woman's heart. That would be Ooh. incredible. Think about how much confidence you have. A recently dead hot woman. Just start making the list. Each one, each one dies. You know what I mean? Just try to create a list and see if you can get in contact with their family. I would like Cher's hot. Ooh. Right. And you're just perpetually auto tuned. <laughs> I think it would be awesome. If I could <laughs> just the auto-tuned man. He's young forever with ass- assless chaps everywhere you go. I believe that I am the world. I just had my heart taken out my chest and replaced with an old lady's soul. I'm sure, Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis, you're still healing. Mr. Ellis, please, please this sit is, down on your gurney. This is my voice now. I'm Jason Ellis. <laughs> Hello. Hello. You've had a rough day. Please take it easy on the techno. <laughs> it's been a rough day. <laughs> Mr. Ellis, you've ripped out your lines. <laughs> I hope I get to go to her house if I get her hot. It'd be cool if she gets to hand it to you in like one of those special, like, you know, when you get those, like you see those people get the special limited edition, like shoes, like in the mail, like, like celebrities or whatever, when people get those things like nice swag. Yeah. But if she can get you a nice shares heart. Like box. Oh, what came dope. in a really classy box? Butler yeah. gives With it like to you? ruby encrusted shit in it. And then you go on That'd YouTube be- and you do an unboxing video. Ooh. Ooh yeah. Content. Yep. Welcome to podcasting, bro. Everything's content. <laughs> because you remember, because Tom Green, you remember when he did the ball cancer? Yes. The ball cancer yes. show? Yes. That you do fucking replace the heart show. Get a new heart show. Oh. Yeah. Maybe yes. You can, you, yeah. you can also try to get a heart from a fan. Yeah, if anybody out there wants to die for me, hit me up. <laughs> That'd be dope. Yeah. We'll do, Dude, a special, how- we'll do a special on TikTok. Yeah. No, hit us up on Patreon for who who, who wants to die for me. <laughs> You'll find some people. Yeah, we'll give- like those guys that are like voluntary uh, victims of cannibals. Yeah, if you give me your heart, I'll give your wife some wolf knife t-shirts. <laughs> everybody loves free t-shirts. Yes. Maybe a sticker. Henry, Henry, on the last pod, uh, Patreon, did you guys give away bones? For years, we did. Um, Marcus Parks' family has a, they, they're a cattle family. So they have cattle in Texas. And so they used to ship bones in these big boxes to, we used to work out of a place called the Creek in the Cave in uh, New York, which was a Mexican restaurant and a comedy club. But he used to fucking 
cut these bones with the bone saw in the restaurant. Like, so it used to be a fucking mess. But yeah, we used to hand out these little chunks of like bone fragments. For years, we just mailed them out. So much better than stickers. Is it, it? Was, it was cool. <laughs> but man, it was just disgusting. You used to go into that yeah. studio and it used to be powdered with bone dust. Oh. Like, it's the technically that's like the most gothy thing on the face of the planet. I was going to say, but, it sounds like some sort of like death metal band. But it's disgusting. It's actually yeah. in actuality. It's disgusting. And it used to smell like farts. And hey, like, Katie, what's putrid. that band that plays? It has all the dead animal oh. meat. So it smells like it. Watane. Yes. Wait, my buddies went to the show that got shut down in Brooklyn where he, they had a goat skull filled with blood and then they just dumped it all over everybody. Whoa. <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, it's Brooklyn. So I think people up to a point were like, oh, this will be fun. What a fun experience this will be to see death metal. I wonder what this is like. And then they just get <laughs> spattered with blood. And then 300 people are technically no longer vegans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Right. That's what you're getting for trying to experiment. All yeah, right. Watain, man. I can't believe I can mention being in the fucking back rooms with Watain. Because that's a, with those death metal bands, you always forget they're just dudes that have to travel with all this bullshit. So they go and they someone's got to go get a new skull. Oh, someone's yeah. got to get the blood before the show. They got to fucking pool it up. What a who's doing this? Well, I guess an intern. Uh, yeah. If you've ever seen the you're going to say Gwar, aren't you? Yes, I knew it. Walking in with a, a garbage bag full of the odorous yeah. costume, and then listening to him put it on in the bathroom. Yeah, we've had yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then smelling the odorous yeah. costume, and then, <laughs> and then hearing him talk about it after he took it off about how hellacious it is to have it on, <laughs> and the fucking stench that uh, him and his bandmates go through every single day of their hideous lives. It's yeah. a fucking ritual, though. It gets you in the guar headspace. It's yeah. Like Voodoo, that yeah, type of shit. It's hard to dodge that you're in gore when you've got that shit on for sure. Yeah, you've got some giant fake rubber dick with a bunch of fake <laughs> cum oozing out of it. It's like, good, time to go to work. You know who you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, hey, thanks for being on the show, man. I really appreciate it, uh, new podcast friend. Dude, welcome to the podcast leagues again. I just want it is an honor for me because this is like you with Stern because you've oh, meant a man. lot to me. I've listened to you. I don't mean to suck your dick in the middle of this week, but I just want to say to you because I won't be able to do this all the time. But you are were one you honestly one of my favorite personalities on the radio. And I'm so excited to be here with you. Well, I'd love Piece to have you shit. back, man. Work? Anytime. No, that yeah, no, I'm chubbing up. Well done. <laughs> all right, great. Thank you guys. Mission honestly, accomplished. Thank yeah. You for having me. Yeah, anytime, dude. Henry Hell Zabrowski, Satan. yep, Hell Satan. Last podcast on the left in their uh, in their book as well. Yeah, they're Spotify exclusive now, right? Ooh, yes. yeah. Oh yeah, wow, that's when you. Oh wow, he did it. He made it. Yeah. Oh. Well, we just, it was. That's a whole other story. That's a whole other story. It's interesting, but Spotify's been good to us. They've been really. They're very very supportive, and they've never said a fuck. Like they don't care about what we do. They believe in what we do, and they they've worked. They've put butts in seats. Okay, they're not muzzling you for talking bad about the trans community. No, I no no no. <laughs> they, I don't. We don't. We love the trans community. Right. Oh, that's so we're awesome. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> we're cool. We're cool yeah. with it. I mean, I don't know. Oh well, they um, it. Yeah. All right. Yep. Wait a minute, Bruce. It sounds like a good deal though to do the uh, what it, you know when you have a deal where some I like where I hear Logan Paul talk about bar stool sports and how he's got to deal with them, mm -hmm. uh, and I think. Well, that's somebody thinks your business is so good. They're jumping in on your business and you have uh, what I would hope is um, some fuck you money. Like you got, you know, they, yep. they gave you something that that you can um, live on, retire on. Yeah. And you made it. You know, isn't that kind of like some people, they make businesses to sell them in the end? Absolutely. Positively. And, you know, I think people, if, you, if they didn't already figure it out for themselves, they'll figure out from Joe Rogan that there's obviously freedom to doing your own thing and then you can get in bed with the business and they can tell you of course go ahead and do whatever you want and they might even mean it when they say it not realizing that now you're under a corporate umbrella and if and if one section of their listenership ob objects very strongly to one little element that maybe was only on your show once or twice or three times or whatever well now you're back in the corporate game you know people are touchy I feel they like are, we get are. loyal listeners and when you have a show with loyal listeners and you do any kind of move, um, people are quick to judge. Because I've heard people talk shit on Joe for being on there and I'm like, Meh. 
Yeah. All of you would do it. You know, if you even un- if you could even comprehend what it is that he did, you would fucking do it. Like this guy is not a moron. He's well, doing he's right. doing all the fucking smartest things that you can do when you're in his shoes. Right. So when you're just like, dude, he doesn't even get it anymore. I disagree. I think he fucking totally gets it. I think he looked at his options and said, either I can continue to be completely free and I can continue to make X amount of dollars projected, or I can take what's in the fucking bag of cash right now. And I've decided that I've had a good run this way and I'm ready to go over there. And from what I know, which is pretty little, but he said they don't own it. It's a fucking, they, they paid for it for a certain amount of years. And then yeah. he's back with all his material again. They don't own the rights to him in any way, he just loaned it to them for an obscene amount of money. Yep, yep, yep. Maybe good for him. Maybe you think he shouldn't have done it. Maybe you would not have done the same thing. But it's a absolutely defensible decision to arrive at. It's the same as hey man, why do one podcast a week? Oh, dude, that's the way it goes at the start. To have sponsors, we need to build the the show, and then the bigger the show gets, the more hours we can do it uh, a week. It's just the way it is. And then the Patreon, which you can see, everybody, if you want to sign up to our Patreon, it is available whenever you want. There's the my solo shows that I do every Thursday and Friday night. And then, of course, the Jason Al show uh, Tuesday and Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 10 or 12, depending if we have a guest or not for the real podcast. But, yeah, a lot of content, four live shows a week. And you can call in Zoom us, just like the old show, but instead of calling... We can see your face and you can yep. take your shirt off and have your wife yelling at you because you're hiding <laughs> in the bathroom smoking weed. Yeah, and we've been doing Patreon for a couple of months now. And if you haven't signed up yet, if you sign up now, like all the shit we've done stays there. Yeah, like you, you if can you, if you catch miss, up. If you miss the old show, that's where the old show is. Right. Very, Very bingeable. Much. Yeah, patreon.com slash Ellis Mate. So you guys did do, we've touched on it a couple times with Henry. You did a stunt just before the show. Yeah, so... I thought, I don't even know how we came up with that. I don't fire a lot. I've almost called Steve-O several times in my life lately because I'm always involved in fires and yeah. I figured he would know. But yeah, I called some people. I think I, 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 t- I tweeted it, asked what would be the thing that you spit on the fire stick because a long time ago, I got a photo on ESPN the magazine and they gave, a fire breather came to my house to teach me how to breathe the fire. And he had one of the legitimate proper it's like it's drumstick and on the end it's got this fluffy thing that uh you light and then you can spit at it and it makes the fire breathe so i lost that i couldn't find it in the garage i think it's hidden behind all the mma mats so i i do googling and i and people that say 151 and all this other stuff because i feel like 151 i could get it from liquor store that's easy to get and then it says absolutely do not do it with alcohol worst thing you could do that's the people that always come into the emergency room, people that breathe fire by using alcohol. So I'm like, okay, don't use that. So it's this kerosene or lamp oil. So I go to the hardware store and I FaceTime Katie. I'm like, that one says lamp oil. So this is as much research as I've got. I've got lamp oil <laughs> in my hand and I bring it back to the house. And I know that I've got an ax stick with without the ax head. So I ripped a t-shirt up because I've seen... Movies where they use pieces of T-shirt. You got tons of those. Got tons of T-shirts. <laughs> yep. And I got this lamp oil. So I poured the lamp oil on it and I thought I'll go live on Instagram just in case somebody has a last minute tip or somebody that I know, maybe somebody that I know that I trust who has done something in fire and goes, whoa, dude, don't do that. So I'm on there. Several people were screaming, do not do that with the lamp oil. You will get hurt. Use alcohol. It's not one, several. Cool. And if I hadn't have Googled it where mm-hmm. it said absolutely do not use alcohol, because now, you know, as we all know, because we've asked people uh, for years on the Jason L show, hey, I've got a lump on my neck. What does that mean? I've been to your dad and you're, you're, you're whatever. They, yeah, they yeah. always predict cancer caused by AIDS. It's yeah. just crazy to know how social media people will just say, yeah, do that or no, don't do that without any, you don't know at all what you're saying at all, which made me, I'm not going to lie. Now I'm fucking paranoid because now they're telling me don't do it. So now I'm like, well, it's in my mouth. I'm going to spit it. And I did do it before. I know that if you spit and you close your mouth. Trick. I've heard that. It's kind of, you know what I mean? If you go, where And leave your mouth open. It'll go in there. Or if you spit for too long, you do too long of a. Yeah. So you got to go, you got to go. Yeah, or else it'll suck back up to your face. So I know that. 
So, but I will tell you, before you guys got here, when I did that, I was, I thought to myself, as an entertainer, make sure it's on the camera, because if your face does light up, like, at least you got a sweet video. Yeah. But it worked fine, super easy, just like I predicted it would. I was like, okay, good, we're, we're done. You come in, and now you've got pink underwear, you got my wife's underwear on, and you're doing a handstand. Yeah. And uh, I think without too much practice... We went. Through, I think we're getting good at doing stunts. Like the, I, I kind of know the. Okay, this could set fire to your leg. If I spit it too low, maybe the gas drips and it burns your crutch. You know, I thought about all the. I thought about that too. Things that a stunt coordinator would think about before I did it. I didn't just let it rip, and and it was. I yeah. felt like it was safe. Nobody got hurt, and I, and I think there was a great video once again of us doing great. Stunts having fun with their lives. We didn't even have to use your fire extinguisher, Kevin. Wait, is yeah, that got, yours? Yeah. You brought it. I did, yeah. I got goofed on for bringing a fire extinguisher <laughs> to a fire stunt. <laughs> I mean, our safety coordinator is fucking Uncle Google. <laughs> Probably doesn't hurt to have uh, a fire extinguisher on standby. I want to back you, Tully, on your original statement. <laughs> but he does have, like, if, we're at, if, uh, if Uncle Google is yep. the stunt coordinator... Mm -hmm. A clear majority of people on Instagram told you which fuel you should use. I don't and they know. said alcohol. <laughs> they yeah. said the wrong one. He's right. If I if I had gone just purely off what Instagram <laughs> said, I might have spat a uh, a mouthful of 151 onto your dick. And that would have, uh, I think, transferred. Uncle Google about. told me that it 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 uh it comes back like where and if you have any on your chin, it that your chin lights up. So if I had a spat yeah. and it drip down onto him because that's the other thing i've been one time i took massive amounts of ecstasy in france and went to a nightclub that was a boat on the in the river and i was friends with these girls that were fire breathers and then they took me to in the front row in between because there was like a, a a cage to stop the people from getting on stage so they put me in the middle like between the stage and the cage so i was completely right up against the with my hands on the stage, like, and it was about chest high, and they were spitting fire over me. And every time they spat a bunch of fire over me, the warm gasoline was landing on my head and on my face. In a, it, it didn't burn at all. It was just like, but I could, I, I was a mental note where I was like, oh, this is, there's fire residue drop. It was like fire rain sprinkling on me that didn't burn. And when you're super high on ecstasy and you're hanging out with a bunch of french chicks one of them had a tattoo of a vagina of a of a forest on her vagina and when we were in this room i was in this little room when they were getting dressed all nobody talked english i'm just solo guy listening to everybody talk about stuff every now and then every now and then i'm like yep that's about me for sure and then it's like yeah i got the thing on the thing and i'm like yeah i would see that and then she's go here you go and it, because i'm so hunched over in this little room her vagina was right here so I was just like, yeah, that's a that's a forest. You know, like I can't even get away from your vagina. This is crazy. Yeah, I can't even see the forest for the vagina. And her other friend had <laughs> red stars, Michael, tattooed on her tits. Oh, and those her, are great. And her red, she tattooed her nipples red. So that means at one point the tattooist had to tattoo her nip nips. Eee, that is ridiculous. That's a fun crew, though. He like, was. Yeah. I mean, I, I was at a party. One of of my life. I was at a party one time and this girl was like kind of fidgeting a little bit in her seat and someone was like, hey, what's what's up with you? And she's like, oh, I just got my vagina pierced. And the room kind of fell silent for a second. Yeah, and she I, so wanted you to she so wanted to tell everybody that. And I was the guy. I was like, um, can we see it? Yeah. And one of my buddies like slapped me in the arm. I was like, ah, fuck. I'm like, I don't know. I figured she threw it out there. Yeah. And like, I don't think she would be pissed at me for Obviously. asking. Yep. And she like hopped up on a table like this, pulled her skirt up. Pulled her panties to the side, and that was the first time I'd ever oh, seen a yeah. pierced vagina in live face-to-face, uh, -face, and it was fucking cool. What a wonderful world. And she was a cool chick. Yeah, everybody, thanks for listening to our show. It's getting bigger every day. Social media's grown. We're growing. We're doing this. Woo! Uh, stream everywhere. Subscribe. Yep. Don't die. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Do 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 boing boing boom bing oh. boing 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 boing
boing boing boing boing boing boing boing boing boing boing meow 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 Fucking boy. 